G'day. Today I'm going to have a quick word about the new regulations from CAA that control the flying of radio controlled models, toys and drones. And first of all, we'll talk about what's covered by these regulations. What do these regulations apply to? Well, they apply basically to anything that flies and weighs up to 25 kilograms. So that's from the tiniest, smallest little toy like this, which weighs 20 odd grams, through to larger toys, like the kind of thing you might find in the toy shop and you might fly outside in your backyard through to the drones that we're all familiar with. This is covered as well. And it doesn't matter whether it's got propellers, or lots of propellers, or just one propeller. If it's a flying aeroplane, it's still covered. It doesn't have to be just a drone with these multiple propellers. And it doesn't actually even need an engine. A glider like this is still covered by the regulations. You still need to know the regulations if you're gonna fly one of these. And in fact, the regulations even apply to something as big as this. Yes, this huge aeroplane here, this huge model here with its petrol motor is subject ooh, to the very same rules and regulations as this <laughs> tiny toy I talked about earlier. So if it flies and it's under 25 kilograms, the rules apply. So let's look at the rules. Right, the first rule is you cannot fly anywhere without the prior consent of the person that owns the property on which you're going to be flying and anyone that occupies the property. That, that means that if you, for example, went to a, a farm, typical dairy farm in New Zealand, you need to have the permission of the owner, who might be a Queen Street farming company, and the occupier, which might be the share milker that actually does all the work. You need to get both those permissions. Now, if you want to fly in your local park or a reserve, you've got to get the permission of your local council or whoever owns that park or reserve. You it's a council. So if you go to most council's websites, hopefully they'll have up a page that briefs you as to where you can fly, where you can't fly. Now, if you don't find a page like that, well, there aren't signposts that say model flying is permitted, then you need to contact the council and get express permission to use that park and reserve. And there are some other considerations. Even if the council gives you permission, you still have to be aware of the fact that you're not allowed to fly over people. And this is common sense. I'm going to do another video talking about the common sense approach to safety. This is the regulatory approach. I'm going to just tell you what the regulations say. Another video, I'll tell you what you should do over and above the regulations, if you want to be really safe, and that's important. But if you're flying at a local park and somebody walks onto the area where you're flying, which means you'd be flying over them or near them, you must stop. You must stop under the regulations and you must obtain their consent or wait until they've left the area. Either of those methods will work. You're not allowed to fly over people without their prior consent. Very important, especially in a public place. The next thing you need to know is that there are certain areas you're not allowed to fly at all. And as you can see behind me here, I'm at an airport, I'm at an airfield. Now you can't fly at an airfield. You can't fly within four kilometers of an airfield because that poses a threat to aircraft that may be taking off or landing. So you, unless you have a special exemption, which is in the form of a private pilot's license, if you've got your own private pilot's license, then you can fly a model at or within four kilometers of an airfield. If you're a member of Model Flying New Zealand and you have their WINGS certification, which is a test of your proficiency and your ability to fly a model safely, then you can also fly within four kilometers of an airfield. But there's still a proviso. You've got to have someone spotting or observing for you because while you're focused on flying your model, there could be a full-size aircraft come into the area and that person needs to keep an eye out to make sure you're not gonna pose a threat to the safety of the full-size aircraft in the vicinity. And remember, near an airfield, there's probably going to be full-size aircraft. So that's common sense but you'll also need to have an arrangement with the airfield operator. You need your wings, you need a spotter, and you need to have an arrangement with the operator of the airfield that you're flying within four kilometers of. And so you need to organize all those things or you will be in breach of the regulations. Now there are also areas where you need to contact the control tower and get permission, or at least advise them that you're going to be flying in certain areas. It's very complex in some cases. In, in the worst case scenario, you'll have to have a two-way radio and an operator's license to use that radio so that you can contact the tower and advise them regularly. That's nothing called a mandatory broadcast zone. Now there are maps on the internet. I'll put links in the description of this video so so you can go there and find out exactly where these areas are and what your obligations and requirements are if you're flying or you want to fly in those areas. And there's one other exemption to the four kilometer restriction and that is what we call a sheltered environment. Now a sheltered environment recognizes that if you're flying your little toy helicopter in your own backyard you're probably not going to be a threat to 
aircraft around because they shouldn't be flying in your backyard. So the definition of a sheltered environment is when you fly within 100 meters of the tallest structure or you're flying is below the height of the tallest structure within 100 meters. So if you're in a park and you fly below the level of the trees and you stay within 100 meters of the trees, you're operating in a sheltered environment. You can't go above the tree height because if you do that, you're no longer in a sheltered environment and you are in violation of the regulations if you are within four kilometers of an airfield. Um, if you're not within 4K of an airfield, you have a few more options. You can fly up to 400 feet, which is about 120 meters. And models are getting pretty small, especially the smaller models we tend to fly these days. So you don't need to worry too much as long as you stay you know, relatively close. Don't make the model a little pinpoint in the sky. You should be safe there. But if you're in any doubt, you can always find somebody who's got telemetry, which is something that some of the models have these days. And it tells you on your transmitter how high you are. But having said that, you must always keep your model in visual sight. You must always be looking at your model. Under the regulations, you must keep the model in visual line of sight at all times. That means you can't fly it so far away you can't see it. That would be a breach of the regulations. And if you have the latest FPV equipment, which is video glasses you put on your face and a camera on the model, then when you're flying FPV, you must have someone else keeping an eye on the model. Because the rationale for that is that there could be someone in a full-size aircraft flying along and you wouldn't see them because your camera only looks out the front. So it's essential to have a spotter when you're flying FPV under all circumstances. CAA say there are no exclusions to this. You must always have somebody looking who can see the model and the surrounding airspace when you're flying with FPV. So no FPV on your own. That's against the rules. So that's a pretty brief summary of the new rules and basically a lot of it boils down to common sense. As I said, don't fly too high, don't fly near airports. If you're going to fly within four kilometers of an airport, you've got to have either your model flying New Zealand wings or a private pilot's license and an agreement with the airfield operator, or you've got to fly in a sheltered environment below the level of the tallest structure within 100 meters of where you're flying. And remember also that you must get the permission of the people who own the land you're flying on and the people who occupy it, which means if it's rented or leased, you've got to get the permission of both parties. And if you are flying, in an area and somebody comes into your flying area, you must stop and obtain their permission to continue flying or wait until they have left the area. It's pretty simple stuff. Um, I'm going to do another video, as I say, with common sense tips because it doesn't cover all the bases. There are lots of things you can do wrong and still be within the regulations. So we're going to look at the real way to produce safety. Regulations are part of the solution, but they're not the entire solution. I'm also going to do another video in which I will voice my opinions on these regulations because this video is straight down the barrel telling you what you can and can't do. But, you know, I have my own opinions about the regulations and I'm happy to voice them. So stay tuned for that video as well. In the meantime, fly safely. Don't put people's lives in danger. Don't put property in danger. Learn about the model you're flying. Learn about the technology. What can you do with it? What can't you do with it? How far will you, you know, can you use this stuff? Not in terms of range, but what are the capabilities? What's a fail safe? There's lots of stuff. If you want to fly safely, you need to know. So stay tuned for the other videos that will fill you in on those details. And as I say, in the meantime, fly safely, fly legally, and you'll have a lot of fun if you can find somewhere to fly.